I'll start recording. Start recording again and we'll move forward. So most of what I'm going to go through is just a demonstration of a few of the key databases and tools. Um, Lily Schools is divided into three uh, grade level categories. So K-4, which is um, uh, general elementary, uh, 5-8, middle and junior high, and then 9-12, which is high school. So we'll jump right in. And hopefully you all can see my browser. It's a simple URL, just lilischools.org, and the homepage looks exactly like that screenshot um, on the PowerPoint where you have the three uh, grade level categories. A couple of other options here, if you want to learn a little bit more about the Lilly Project, uh, or frequently asked questions, or if you're running into any issues, you can use the contact button, or you can reach out to me directly uh, through my email. So let's go ahead and jump into K4. And each grade, uh, okay, Amy, that sounds great. Each grade level page um, is going to have different topics that you can jump to. K4 has the fewest number of digital resources available. So there are fewer subcategories up here. But if you click, let's say science math, it will take you down to that section. You can also scroll up and down um, to browse through. Um, and I'm going to start by showing you the World Book um, databases. So we'll open World Book Kids and then our Spanish version, which is IASGOS. And I'm going to actually turn off my camera so you can focus on that. Okay, so this is the home page for. World Book Kids is very vibrant and appealing for an elementary school student. Um, I just want to point out a couple of things while we're in here. Up in the upper right hand corner, you'll find the Educator Tools button. This is going to take you to um, curriculum correlations so you can go in and find the specific subject that you're looking for, um, the grade, and it should load. Um, the content standards for your selection up here. And then you can tie it in to content from WorldBook. You can also jump to lesson plans. So these are ready-made lesson plans um, that WorldBook has created. So it's to logic puzzle. And if you go into a lesson plan, will show you the what you need, um, your objectives, the procedures, we'll lay it all out for you, as, long, uh, as well as discussion and assessment questions, and then references. So this gives you um, the option to go to the student version of this activity. Student is the middle school version of WorldBook. Scroll back up and click the back button. So those are lesson plans. Um, you also have the option to do web quests. So um, if you are hoping to teach your students how to use WorldBook, web quests are a good way to do that. Um, they're printable um, and they just allow your students a fun way to learn how to use the database. Right. So if we click the logo in the upper left-hand corner, that will take us back to the landing page for WorldBook. Uh, I want to point out a couple more fun features on WorldBook Kids. Down here at the bottom, you'll see a few different options. Um, compare places is a fun tool for students to do comparisons. So let's do uh, countries, and we will compare Afghanistan and... Argentina, and you see they pop up down here. And this gives you the option to quiz yourself or immediately compare. So if you click quiz me, it's going to take you to a series of questions that you can answer. So I'll say, I think Argentina is the largest, and then it will show you the actual square miles and 
uh, square kilometers on the side. You can then go to the next question or click compare all, which will take you to the full comparison um, of all of the questions that it would have asked you on the quiz. This just gives you all the answers, the full comparison. All right, and then you can just exit to go back to the home homepage. World of Animals is another fun um, feature that's similar to compare, excuse me, compare places, um, but with animals. So let's show with land mammals. Let's choose the aardvark and the baboon. See again, it pops up down here and gives you those same options. You can go straight to compare if that's what you want. Students also have the option to print this page so they can refer to it offline later. All right, any questions about the comparison tools? And please feel free to um, interrupt me as we go along because I'm going to be going through a lot of tools. So if I'm going too fast, let me know. No, I, I finally got in. I'm not sure if you can hear me. I had to relaunch, but I'll listen to the first part on the recording, but I don't have questions so far. Perfect. You didn't miss much at the beginning, so you should be okay. I'm glad you got in. I, I didn't have any trouble earlier, but just couldn't hear a thing. So, but I'm in now. Yay. Okay, great. All right. So those are the comparison tools. Um, Let's go to a couple of other search tools. So there's a basic search bar here for students. Um, no advanced searching. Um, elementary students generally aren't going to be doing much advanced searching. This explore tool is basically a browse option for students. So let's say they're doing a project on sports and they want court sports. And this is going to take them to a list of articles um, related to court sports. So if we open the article on Charles Barkley, this is what an article is going to look like in World Book Kids. You have several different options here. Um, so you can have the article read aloud. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it, but it does highlight the words as it's reading. Um, if you go to tools over on the right hand side, you can change the read aloud settings. Um, so if the student prefers a male voice or they want it read to them in an Australian accent, they can do that. And they can also slow down or speed up the narration. There are also options for translation, um, printing, sharing to Google Classroom, or saving to Google Drive or OneDrive or to their computer or other device. Citations can be found at the bottom of the article or in the citation tool up here. And you'll see um, there's also an option to get more information about the topic and student, which again is the middle school version of WorldBook and it will have a more um, detailed article. Just checking my notes, I want to make sure I cover everything I wanted to. Um, you'll also see curriculum standards up here on the right hand, or excuse me, left hand side. Not every article is going to link to curriculum standards or have a Lexile measure associated with it, um, but these tools are available um, if you wanted to check. All right, so let's hop over to the Spanish version of World Book Kids. Um, we commonly refer to it as IASGOS. You'll see um, Mundo de Animales is very similar to the World of Animals feature in World Book Kids. Just another comparison tool. So let's do the same search we did before with land mammals. And so it does look a little bit different. Um, let's see it. It did. Um, let's just do 
baboon. So it gives you some information about it. And it also adds that animal to your comparison tool up here. And then we'll do coyote. Again, it's going to give you information and add it to your tool up here. And then it will automatically take you to a quiz screen. Um, you can choose your answer here and then it will give you um, the results for both animals or you can choose to compare immediately. It also has some fun sound effects that it does with it. And again, this can also be printed. Okay, and then when you're done with that comparison tool, you can just exit out with the X, which will take you back to the landing page. So similar to World Book Kids, it's a ser simple search bar over here. So let's search for Martin Luther King Jr. And this will give us a few results here. Let's just choose the top article. So you have a lot of the same tools in IASCOS that you have in World Book Kids. Options for printing, sharing, emailing. You can jump to the English version in World Book Kids down here at the bottom. You also have your citations. And you can go to related articles over here on the left-hand side. Oh, which will take you down here, excuse me. And then, so if you wanted to learn more about Martin Luther King Jr. Day, you can jump to that article and you'll have the same uh, options here. Can I just ask a quick question? Uh, yeah. World Book Kids, so I'm assuming that's where we went. Is there different world books for the different ages? I think I saw the student. You mentioned something about World Book Student. Yes. World Book Kids Did I catch is. That? Yes. World Book Kids is the elementary level. Okay. World Book okay. Student is middle school. And then there's World Book Advanced for high school. Perfect. Thank and you I'll, so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll touch on each of them. Um, I just can't go too in depth with any of them. Okay, no, that's that's perfect. I just wanted to make sure I was understanding it right. Yeah, Thank great you. question. All right, so let's close out of both of those and go back to Lily Schools if there's no more questions. Um, while we're in K4, I'm going to show you Explora. Explora also has um, an elementary, middle, and high school platform. They're all going to look the same. They just pull from different databases. So Explora Primary pulls only from databases that are targeted at elementary students. So I'll just show you Explora Primary um, because all of the functions are the same. Again, the content is going to be the only difference. So this is what it looks like. Um, it looks more typical of a, a database search page. You have um, some tools on the left-hand side. So again, there's curriculum standards, citation assistance, um, and then this research guide is pretty handy. Um, you're going to have a featured story or topic at the top of each of the Explora pages. And as you scroll down, there will be popular topics for that particular um, grade range, further topics and featured content. Again, it will be more advanced um, as you go uh, to the more advanced um, Explore pages. So um, if you, you can create a My EBSCO account, that's free to create um, if students or ed educators want to save their searches in the Explora um, platform, they can do that. Um, let's just go on with our theme and search for Martin Luther King Jr. So once you've done a search, at the top of each of your search results pages, you should have a topic overview, which is basically an encyclopedia entry. So if we click read more, it will tell us, well, this was actually published in an encyclopedia, um, and then what database it was pulled from. So this is one of the databases that Explore Primary pulls from is topic overviews K5. 
you have some options up here at the top so students can download the article to read offline. Um, in some articles are able to be translated. I don't know that this one, oh, it is, there's many different languages to translate it into. Um, some articles can be read aloud, some don't have that option. So it's kind of hit, hit and miss. Most of the online full text can be read aloud, but not all of the PDFs can be. Um, and then your citation tools um, with a number of different styles. Explorer has a lot more citation styles than WorldBook does, which is nice. And then your options to add it to a project if you're signed into EBSCO or you can share it um, to Drive or Classroom. One thing I want to point out, um, I know this was a frustration for me when I was in school, was that I would try to save this URL to go back to an article later and it wouldn't work. These are permalinks now at the top, so students can save the URL at the top and get back to the article they want to um, access again. They can also, I believe, uh, create a permalink under the share option right here, which um, looks a little bit different than this URL up here, but it should take them to the same article. Let's go back here. Um, if students want to do a more advanced search and filter down their results, they have the option to here at the top of the search results page so they can limit by time, um, the source type. So if they only want, let's say, encyclopedia entries, they can choose that and apply it. And then it will show you how many filters you've employed over here. They can also click advanced search if they are looking for a very specific article. They could put in um, the author name and title, or if there's multiple subjects they're looking for, they can do that here. Uh, let's see, let's go back to our search results page. So if you scroll down, you see there's, um, actually let me undo my filter. I mentioned that there's PDF or online full text. Some articles have both options. So the online full text is just stripped of any imagery. This is generally what can be read aloud, but looks like it's not working today. And then a PDF is going to be like exactly what it would look like in the book or magazine that it was pulled from. So it will have all of the imagery um, and it will be like you're reading it out of the book, essentially. All right, any questions about Explora or any of the things I just showed you? If students are signed in with an EBSCO account, they'll be able to access their searches, um, which it should show me what I've searched today for this session. But once I'm exited out of the session, those will clear. Was there a question? I don't have a question. Okay, I just heard a noise, so I wanted to make sure I didn't talk over you. All right, we will move on then. So I'll show you how to jump to uh, the different grade level categories once you're in a grade level uh, page. So just down here at the bottom, it will say jump to, and then you can click on the grade level category you want. So we'll look at our middle school resources. And as I mentioned earlier, the higher the grade level, the more subcategories you're going to see. So I believe there were four for the elementary page, and you can see there are more than four here on the middle school page. So I'll show you WorldBook Student to begin with so we can compare that to WorldBook Kids. So you can see it doesn't look quite as... Um, young, it's a little more advanced. There are different features here. 
you don't have um, the same comparison tools at the bottom, although you can find comparison tools over here in the menu. There's that compare places. You'll still see your educator tools um, up in the top right. Worldbook Student does allow you to log in if you want to save your research in the Worldbook platform. Again, that's free to make an account. Go back. All right, and then you do have the option for an for advanced search in Worldbook Student. You can even choose what Lexile measure you want, which is kind of fun. All right. Let's see. One of the neat tools on Worldbook Student is this how to do research um, page which is basically a whole lesson on conducting research from just an introduction to research skills all the way to presenting the project. So I think it's a great resource to point students to or to use as you're teaching research skills. And um, you can jump ahead to different sections. Um, and then if you open the table of contents tab, it will pop out on the left-hand side and you can go back to the beginning um, jump down to the bottom, however you want to do that. Right, and then of course, if you click the logo at the top, that will take you back to the landing page. Um, I haven't explored this new feature on students' games, but that might be fun to explore. Looks like there's some different uh, science and math games. So let's see what an article on Martin Luther King Jr. would look like in student. So there are several additional topics, uh, related topics that you'll find in student um, that you wouldn't find in kids. Go ahead and click on the top one. And you'll see, as I mentioned, it's just a lot more detailed article. You still have the option to have the article read aloud. And you can change the voice right next to the play button, which I think is uh, a lot more convenient. The tools button is still under this gear icon. One of the things I really love about student is that you can change the font to the open dyslexic font for articles. Uh, I don't know why it's not available in the other world book databases, but for some reason it's only available in student. So that is an option. You can also change the text size to a larger, um, your same translation and share tools. Uh, if the article is long, you can view it by section and then go to the next page to see the next section. You can also jump ahead in the article if it's long. And again, there are curriculum standards up here at the top. If, if they're available for that particular article, they would be here. And then a Lexile measurement. So this one actually does show us that it has a Lexile measurement. Okay, let's go back to the home screen. Um, and then students can sort through the featured content here. We'll give a nice picture in the background and then tell you what the actual subject is down here. Um, or they can browse through a number of other uh, resources on this page. In the interest of time, I'll go ahead and jump over to what's called Worldbook Discover. So this is for grades five plus. Um, it's our high-low database for world books. So high interest, low literacy level, great for maybe um, English language learners or students who are still struggling um, with their literacy skills. Discover is a good option for them. So you'll see the search bar is just a simple search, no advanced searching. Um, We'll go ahead and search Martin Luther King Jr. so I can show you what the difference looks like in that article. 
students can choose to look at the simplified article or a more detailed article. And you can see the difference. And the more detailed article has a lot more hyperlinks and obviously a lot more just information in there. Again, they'll have the read aloud settings, same options to change the voice, and their um, settings and tools will be under the same gear icon. Uh, this is in Discover, there are related games that are attached to the article, uh, more information and the media stripped from the article. See up in the top, you still have your educator tools button. Um, and then finally, I think this life skills um, center up here at the top is really neat. Um, I was talking to somebody who works at a bank about this gaining financial know-how um, option under World Book Discover. Um, it's just a great, great resource to have right in here. So even if students um, aren't struggling with reading, there's some really cool tools in World Book Discover for them to look through. Any questions about Discover or Student? All right, I will move along then. So I'm going to go back up to the top and jump to literature reading and we'll look at Novelist Plus K8. And I'll talk a little bit about the difference between Novelist Plus and the Novelist Plus K8. It's in the name, K8 is for um, kindergarten through eighth grade students and then Novelist Plus is from basically those pre-readers up through adult. They're going to look pretty much the same, just different content similar to Explora. So once you're in Novelist, um, and let me back up a minute, this is a reader's advisory tool. So helping your students find something they want to read um, either for pleasure or for a school assignment. One of my favorite things is this appeal mixer down here. So you can choose the age range. You have those um, middle grade readers at ages nine through 12, and you can choose from the um, automated options up here. So if your student wanted something that was gross and funny, um, here's a few reading recommendations for them. They can also make their own combo. So if we click on Appeal Mixer, they can select a category. So if they want, excuse me, a character who is awkward and the pace is fast paced, you can click Find Titles. We'll see if we come up with anything. Oh, and then you will want to choose your age level up here too. Forgot to do that. Awkward and fast paced. Diary of the Wimpy Kid. Makes sense. So once you found a book you might be interested in, you can click on the cover and that will take you to the page um, for that book, which will give you all of the pertinent information, tell you about the, the tone, storyline, etc., what the recommended grade level is, and then there will usually be reviews listed here. If a student is on um, a page for a book and they realize, oh, I've already read this book, or it sounds kind of interesting, but maybe there's some elements they don't like, they can use these um, search options down at the bottom to look for additional titles that have some of the elements of that book. So let's say they want an attention grabbing writing style and the tone is angst filled and they can do a search. And that will um, bring them to a list of results. They can limit it to their age range. and it will limit that down for them.
All right. So once you have um, a search result list like this, there's a few more cool tools that you can use. So title read alikes. If you click that, that will give you a list of it's generally nine titles that are similar to that title. And then it gives you a reason why novelist believes it's similar. Um, it's going to be the same thing with author read-alikes and series read-alikes. So if you have a student who loves series and just blows through books really fast, they may want another series that reads like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, for example. Um, there's going to be another list of nine options here. And I will say while we're in novelists, there is the option to link your school library's catalog to the novelist platform so your students can see if um, your school library has a copy of the book that they're interested in. All right, so before we move on to the next database, there's a few uh, more options up here. You can browse by genres, um, different appeals, or if you want to look at award winners, that's an option up here. I want to show you the genre guides under quick links. So if you or another um, teacher or educator is trying to get a little more versed in a certain genre so you can better recommend books to kids, this is a good place to go. Um, so we'll look at this guide for graphic novels for older kids. Each guide is going to go through, well, what is, in this instance, graphic a graphic novel? What happens? What are the themes? Why do kids like it? And then it will show you key titles, series, authors, um, different foundations, which could help with collection development as well. And then there's some options for searches to try a novelist. Any questions about novelists before I move on? Not from me. Okay. Perfect. We'll go back to our Lily Schools page, and I'm going to jump over to the high school databases. And again, you'll see there are even more subcategories available here because the majority of our um, digital resources are aimed at that high school and um, getting ready for college crowd. Um, as I mentioned, there's a world book a platform for high school students. So if we go to general multi-topic, we'll see World Book Advanced. You can also see World Book Discover as an option here because that is for grades five and up. World Book Advanced looks a lot different than the other World Book platforms. It's a very simple landing page with just a search bar, um, advanced search option, and then there's usually a featured topic, which is the background picture, and then the actual topic down here. Um, so more specific research options, fewer just browsing options. If you go to research and resources in the upper right hand corner, um, you still have access to the educator tools right here. There's still a compare places tool. Um, the citation builder is pretty handy. So um, this is for students have resources that they accessed outside of WorldBook. They can build a citation for it here on the WorldBook platform. And then another neat tool over here under research is the Pathfinders tool. So um, there are shared Pathfinders, so things that folks in the WorldBook community have created. Um, I think the ones that WorldBook has created themselves are great. So let's go into American Civil War. So then this is going to give you just um, a little quick overview of the Pathfinder, and then you can go to the articles and study aids related to that Pathfinder over here. So I want to go to Northern Military Leaders, and I'm going to choose Ulysses S. Grant.
And then that takes you to an article um, on that topic. So you'll see in advanced, you have the same, a lot of the same tools you did in the other world book platforms, the ability to have it read aloud. Your gear icon is actually up here. Um, can change the text size, save it, view it in sections. Your curriculum standards are linked up here next to the article. And then there are a few additional links you can choose from on the left hand side. Citations can be accessed at the bottom of the article or you can use the citation tool under the settings icon. All right. So then last tool that we'll look at under World Book Advance, let's go back to the landing page, go under research and we'll go to timelines. So this is a kind of a neat resource. There are ready-made timelines that you could use in the classroom or students could use um, in their projects, but they can also create their own timelines from scratch. So let's, Let's search for, let's go back to World Book Timelines. Let's search for Martin Luther King Jr. You'll see there's a ready-made timeline, the life of Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and his family or the days and celebrations that are associated with him. So from... 1927 all the way over to 2011. Students ha can share or save the timeline. Um, they can get a printable view if they want to print it and view it offline. And they can do the same thing for their own timelines. All right, close out of that. And you may have noticed as I've been scrolling through that there are quite a few of these tools that have the Gale um, banner at the top. These are all just Gale eBooks um, and we've separated them out because they're such different topics. So let's, let's go to we'll do history and we'll do a new world power. So this link is going to take us directly to that ebook's table of contents. So you can jump ahead. We'll do the Great Depression. And that's going to take us into that chapter or section of the book. And it's going to look very similar to articles um, that you see on the other databases. So you have options for translation, um, decreasing or increasing the font size. There is the open dyslexic font option here in Gale eBooks, and that will change the font for um, the book you're in. One of the features I really like is that you can change the line spacing, which makes it a little bit easier to read sometimes. Um, and you can change the background, which could be helpful for that contrast. Same sharing, downloading, and print settings. Uh, also have the option to view it as a book. So just as it would look in the book, if you were reading it that way, with all of the images and formatting, the one thing I will say is that you don't have all of those same um, accessibility options in the book view as you do in the text view. Um, but you can take... Uh, do highlights, you can define a word right in the text, just double click it or highlight it and add a note or delete the note and highlight. Very easy. And if you find yourself in an ebook and want to see what other ebooks are available in Gale, um, you can just click the logo up here in the upper left-hand corner, and that will take you to the full collection of Gale eBooks. So if you wanted to see everything that's offered under history, 
you can see that here. Um, and one more thing I'll show you when you're in an ebook. Uh, let's go back to that page. You can see the content level. So level five is um, high school level. Um, and that will tell you just what the reading, general reading level is. All right. There are no questions. I'll move on to our last database. Scroll back up to the top. And let's go to Computers and Technology Learning Express. So this is also broken into the different centers, um, but Learning Express actually collects multiple um, centers on different topics uh, for grades four and up. So Learning Express, you do have to create an account to save your progress. So I'll go ahead and sign in. Maybe if I can remember my password. Okay. Well, while I'm getting my password, are there any questions? Is, is this the only one that you have to create like user ID password for? Yes. Yep. That's okay. a good question. This is the only one. Um, and I'll show you what the register page looks like, actually. So you can see it should just ask, for some reason, it asks if you're a European Union citizen. I don't know why. Um, but you'll only have to put in your first name, email, and a password. So very minimal personal identifiable information. I just ask, because if we use the tablets to check out for... Mm. The Lily schools and or um, Sora. Sora, yeah, just what we might need to watch for sign ins and sign outs and Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Learning Express would be one. Okay. And it sh it should in theory log students out when they've exited out of the browser on the tablet. Okay. Unlike Sora, it should log them out. Okay. So once you're logged in, it will automatically take you to my center, which will give you an overview of everything that you've started and saved your progress on. So you can see I have quite a few because I demonstrate this a lot. Um, but we'll go to the home page so you can see the different centers. Um, so several different centers. Um, I'll just focus on a couple, uh, the grades four through eight educator resources. Uh, we'll jump to middle school. It's basically practice to help students improve uh, their skills in the core subject areas. So here, math, English, and social studies. Um, there are also eBooks they can download um, or tutorials they can go through. So a tutorial, um, I'll show you what that looks like really quick. So it's different units. Um, it'll give you an overview and then students can choose to take a pretest or just jump right into the tutorial. They can also jump around to different sections of the tutorial um, if they feel like they understand um, one subject pretty well, but they need help in another area, they can jump to that. And then you'll see the status up here at the top. Um, and if you click finish later, it will ask you if you want to save it to your center or close without saving. It's going to be the same thing for uh, elementary for those fourth and fifth graders. There's just fewer options for those grade levels. High school students are going to have the same options again, but there will be more 
Um, again, in the core subjects, math, English, science, social studies, um, as well as technology skills improvement. Most of it is practice. There's some ebooks, articles, and tutorials, um, and occasionally flashcards or games. Um, but what I really want to show you is the college admissions test prep center. So if you have students who are preparing for the SAT, uh, Learning Express just released their new digital SAT test prep center. So students can learn about it or they can jump right in and take a practice exam. So we'll click start test. And it will take you to a test overview page and then you have a few different options for your test mode. So um, if you're just starting out, you can start in a learner mode, which will give you the answers as you're going through. My favorite is practice. So the timer will be going at the top of the page, um, but it won't stop the test um, at the when the timer ends. Um, and then it will give you the answer explanations after you've finished the exam. And simulation will be like you were actually taking the test. So once you click start test, it will take you to the test page. You'll see your timer up here at the top. There's question tools if you have that option. Um, you can jump to another question or finish later since this is practice. And then finally, we do have a popular software skills center. So if students wanted um, additional help with Microsoft Office products or they wanted to learn Illustrator or Photoshop, these are video tutorials. Um, gives you the estimated time for the whole class. But if there's something specific they want to learn, they can choose that from the table of contents up here at the top. Okay, and I know I'm coming close to time, so I'm rushing through those. Are there any questions about the databases? Or Lily schools in general? None that I can think of right now. There is a ton of information out there though. This is great. Yeah, tons of information. I would I encourage no you all, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I just had, I had no idea. So this is great. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I encourage you to poke through um, because I just touched on a couple of the bigger resources. There's a ton more on here. Um, as I said earlier, this is recorded, so I'll make it available for you all. Another way to um, familiarize yourself with what's available, um, I'll show you on lily.org backslash guides. If you go to get to know the Lily tools, this will give you link out to additional resources um, and tutorials for each of the main databases. So I'm looking at Chilton, but if we look at World Book Online, you can see there's a bunch of information and then tutorials. So if you get stuck somewhere, you can go here or feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'll put my contact info back up here. All right, and then I think, let me just check the, actually, let me stop, stop recording. <laughs>